Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another edition of AquaFX.net, where we're gonna discuss how to know when it's time to change our filters, uh, see how the performance is doing, and kind of just assess the system as a whole. See if we need new uh, RO membranes, new DI meteor, or what's going on in short. The first thing I like to do when I'm assessing my system is take a look at the TDS values. I've got really three points of interest. I've got my incoming tap water. I've got my production RO water but then I've got my final product RODI water. I should expect to see three different values here and that's what we're gonna look for right now. First thing I do when I come over to my unit is I like to take a look at my source water. It's, un it's important to understand what our source water is in order to assess the rest of the filtration system. So what I like to do is I come over here to my dual inline TDS meter and I hit the on button. Notice that my paddle is pushed to the in position. Now this doesn't necessarily mean the water's going into or out of the unit. It's just the in probe, which traditionally is the red and white wire. And if I follow it along to my probe, I'll notice the word in is actually on that probe, letting me know I'm looking at the right probe. So again, I take a look at my tap water and I see a value of about 147, 148 parts per million, jumping a little bit back and forth. Uh, but that is my water quality here in Winter Park, Florida. So as a general rule of thumb, my 147 parts per million should be at least 90% less after my RO membrane. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the same probe and I'm gonna switch it to the out probe. Following the blue and white wire will lead you to the probe that we factory install. We do put this out probe in right from AquaFX if you buy the unit from us directly or if you get it from one of our vendors and you have a TDS meter put on the unit, this is where we automatically install one of the probes. The reason is this is the only way you can tell if your RO membrane has failed or if the RO membrane is just not doing that well right out of the box or what's going on. So now that I'm switching my TDS meter to my out probe, my out probe is showing a very similar value of about 125 parts per million. It is very safe for me to say at this point that my RO membrane has failed and that my DI is picking up the legwork. And even though I might see zero part per million on the other exit side of my system, that this is not an efficient way to move forward. So what we're gonna do right now, because we've assessed that our membrane has failed, is we're gonna kind of shut off the system and we're gonna replace the sediment pre-filter, one micron sediment pre-filter, the 10 inch carbon block, and the RO membrane, which right now is a 50 gallon per day RO membrane. So the first step to changing my filters is to shut off the cold water line. Uh, this is my little demonstrational test bench, so I just have a quarter inch ball valve that I'm shutting off. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my 10 inch filter wrench provided from AquaFX, and I'm gonna put it around my sediment filter, and I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise, releasing the filter. And then I go ahead and I just unscrew it. Now you will get some water on yourself and on the work area that you're in, so just be careful. At this point, I've got a canister full of water. I can go ahead and remove my sediment filter and go ahead and just discard him. Now I'm gonna take my new 10 inch sediment filter from Aqua Engineering and just pop the bottom, take off the cellophane, remove it and go ahead and just place it in the canister. You can empty the canister of the water that's inside to go ahead and make it a little bit easier, but it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna go ahead and push this back into place, carefully letting the threads catch one another. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a hand tighten. And then it is important to go ahead and grab your filter wrench and to torque it down maybe about a quarter turn. Sometimes even less, depending on if you have better hand strength. And I'm now gonna repeat the same process for my carbon filter. Go ahead and lift the bracket up, put the filter wrench on the canister and turn. And this really shouldn't cause you a lot of physical stress. Go ahead and drop the canister. A little bit of water, normal. And I'm just gonna go ahead and discard this 10 inch carbon block at this point. So again, I've got my aqua engineering and equipment 10 inch carbon block. Go ahead and remove it from the cellophane. It is important to note that there are these little O-rings like the one that just fell off. If one of these O-rings is been uh, stuck in the canister or is still present inside the lid, 
this could cause some sort of a flow issue. So, so just make sure that the old ones that came with the old filter are off and that the new ones that came with the new filter are on. There we go. So just dropping this in. The sediment filter and the carbon filter are not directional filters. So they can be placed in whichever way is easiest. I'm gonna go ahead and just start to fasten this canister back with my hands again, giving me a hand tight feel. Notice I'm pushing out a little bit of water. This is fine. Probably a good idea for you to have a towel at home on hand just to grab that. And I'm now gonna put my 10 inch filter wrench back on the canister and turning it the opposite direction to tighten it. At this point, those two canisters should be pretty leak free. Now we're gonna move on to the RO membrane since we've assessed that he has failed. The first thing I like to do when I'm replacing my RO membrane is to go ahead and disconnect the pre-filtered water that's feeding into the RO membrane. This will make it infinitely easier for you to maneuver this housing when and where needed. Uh, per personally, I like to have uh, either a coworker or a friend hold the end of the housing as I begin to twist this cap because it can really uh, fight you. So this one I have previously loosened. And you notice the cap will slide off. Take note of any O-rings that may be present. Every now and then there's one inside the cap, not with this particular housing, but if there is an O-ring present in either spot, make sure that it's there when you put the cap back on, otherwise you'll have a leak. What I like to do is grab a set of vice grips, needle nose pliers, or something that'll give you a good bite on the end of this membrane housing. Without these, you're gonna have a very hard time removing this RO membrane uh, from the housing. What I like to do is go ahead and just pull while I twist, and this will relieve some of the seal that happens from these two O-rings on the inner part of the housing. If you notice here, we're replacing a aqua engineering and equipment, 50 gallon per day RO membrane. 50 gallon per day wasn't quite keeping, keeping up with what I needed. So what I'm doing is I'm upgrading to a 100 gallon per day aqua engineering and equipment RO membrane. At the same test pressure, this membrane will produce about twice as much water. There is one key uh, difference in these two membranes, and that's gonna be the flow restrictor inside the waistline. You'll notice that I actually ordered a 100 gallon per day flow restrictor with my replacement membrane. We're gonna go through installing this flow restrictor inside the drain line in just a moment. After you've removed the membrane from the packaging, do not take off any of this tape which holds this black skirt in place. This black skirt is called a brine seal and is very important to the RO process. Same thing is true with the other side of the membrane. There will be two O-rings that will push into the housing first. Make sure they stay on the membrane. You really won't have to do anything to this membrane once you've removed it from the clear plastic. So again, double O-ring first, sliding into the housing. You will actually feel your membrane seat and go ahead and just push it in about finger pressures as hard as you can, but not too much force. At this point, my membrane's seated. I can go ahead and make sure my O-rings are present everywhere and just take the cap and screw it back on. Make sure it's tight so that you don't develop a leak. Go ahead and push it back down and take that quarter inch tube and just shove it back into the fitting. At that point, my membrane is changed and ready to uh, start producing some water. Um, one key note is that the RO membranes come with a preservative on them, sodium metabisulfate, and if you do not properly rinse this preservative off, it's going to exhaust your DI filter unnecessarily. So what I like to do personally is either remove my DI from the system or disconnect the tube as it comes off the RO product water and allow this to drain for a couple of minutes. The only true way to tell when your membrane is ready is to, to reference the TDS meter. Remember earlier that we had a baseline value of about 140 parts per million in our tap water, meaning that after my membrane, I should expect to see about 14 parts per million or less. So my TDS meter is now switched to the out probe, which is the product water leaving my RO membrane, and we can see that that number is slowly falling. I was at about 30 parts per million, now I'm about 20 parts per million, and I'm steadily decreasing. Once I've reached my 14 parts per million, I'll know that that's at least 90% rejection, and I'll feel pretty confident that my membrane is doing its job properly. Um, if you have enough pressure, like we do here at the shop, I've got about 60 pounds in my line, um, I will expect this TDS value to be even lower. 
Membrane manufacturers do boast a 98.6% stabilized salt rejection. Uh, to make these numbers happen, it is possible, but you know, again, I usually look for about 95% rejection, just as a very uh, rough number to see if things are working properly. And I can see now that after less than a minute, my RO membrane is already at eight parts per million. And I'm sure if we let that sit for about another five or 10 minutes, that number would drop again, maybe even as low as six parts per million. Okay, I've, I've gone ahead and changed my RO membrane. What I'm gonna wanna do now to keep things appropriate is to go ahead and change the flow restrictor. On my Barracuda, my, my yellow waistline is located immediately next to my product tube. I'm gonna hold the collar in, and I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect my yellow tube. Notice that my flow restrictor has stayed stuck inside of my quarter inch elbow coming off my membrane housing. There's a nice easy way to, to take care of this. Go ahead and push the collar in with your fingernail and kind of just push it out of the fitting. That's what we're gonna go for here. And notice I've actually taken the collar out without breaking any of the teeth. And I'm able to remove my floor restrictor now on my collar without any trouble. I can now take this and kind of compress the teeth together a little bit and it pushes right back in. And just like that, the fitting is, is perfect, still 100% usable. I'm now taking my 50 gallon per day flow restrictor and I'm replacing him with a 100 gallon per day flow restrictor. These are internal capillary type flow restrictors. There are other types on the market. There are external with quick connect fittings. We even have some external with a flush kit built into it. So again, there are many types of uh, flow restrictors. What we're gonna wanna do is just conveniently place the new floor restrictor, again, 100 gallon per day, you can tell because of the white head, tail end first into the uh, tube. If you try to put the head in first, it won't fit, so it's pretty straightforward. And we're just gonna take that and we're gonna plug him back into our waistline. Again, making sure that the tube is in there nice. And now our membrane is uh, appropriately changed, allowing for the appropriate amount of wastewater and uh, correct amount of flow. So we've just doubled the output of our system from 50 to 100 gallons per day from simply changing the flow restrictor and a membrane which was needing service anyway. So this was a really good step for us. My one final stage is to change my DI. I just checked the, the value of the TDS exiting my DI filter from my test port here. And I've got a value of about 19 parts per million, which is not acceptable for my reef or salt tank. I'm, I'm aiming for zero and I will achieve zero parts per million. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn my TDS meter off, store him to the side, shut off the cold water line. I'm gonna take my filter wrench to my DI canister and I'm gonna go ahead and start to loosen him. Again, I get a little bit of water that, that falls out and that's normal, being that the unit was under pressure. And I've got my filter being removed. Another key point that I really want to touch on right now in the video is that our DI still looks like it has some capacity just based on color change alone. You can see where you've got that rust red amber color at the bottom that's kind of indicating the filter's exhausting, but as you travel to the top you can see where some of that color change hasn't quite taken place. Every resin manufacturer will let you know that the color change is pH indicated and is not necessarily the telltale sign when your filter is exhausted. You really want to test the TDS out of this filter. And if you're at zero parts per million, whether or not the color is an orange or a dark amber or a blue black color, if you're at zero parts per million, the water is tested perfect. We were just at 18, 19 parts per million, so I know this filter is exhausted regardless of the color. And we're going to go ahead and open up our new Aqua Engineering and Equipment 10 inch DI filter. We seal these in a black plastic cellophane. It helps uh, stop light from coming into contact with the DI I mean, making the color change happen prematurely. Um, it also helps keep the air uh, from coming into contact with the DI. Um, the DI can shrivel and dehydrate. So every now and then, if you notice you have a little bit of space in there, it'll actually f uh, rehydrate and expand back. So don't, don't add anything. Again, I'm adding DI to my canister that already has water in it and kind of just displacing the water. And I'm gonna go ahead and hand tighten my DI canister back onto the frame, at which point I'll take my filter wrench and go ahead and just torque it down again, maybe about a quarter turn or less, maybe even an eighth of a turn. And I can go ahead and turn my water back on. And all I'm going to be doing is just testing the DI water. One way to 
identify if an RO membrane is behaving appropriately or not is looking at the flow of water that comes out of the RO membrane. The flow of water out of an RO membrane should be very slow and minute. I just installed a new membrane and new filters onto this system and the water hasn't quite reached the top of the DI can canister yet, but once it does you will notice a very slow permeate stream. If you install new filters and you have water being made very fast, say a gallon in under five minutes, then something is wrong and you'll want to just go ahead and reseat your filters. You can see the rate of RO water production is very, very slow. This is a good sign that things are working appropriately. I'm now going to go ahead and grab my TDS meter and just check the value of the RODI water I just captured. And you can see, though I'm dripping out a little water there, I'm very comfortably at zero parts per million, meaning the water is electrically neutral. There are no dissolved solids in this water. There is nothing in this water. Um, we're now producing zero part per million water. Our membrane is removing at least 90% of the TDS, which tells us our membrane is doing its job properly, so we're in really good shape. One way that we can avoid having our membrane fail prematurely is to change out our sediment and carbon filters more regularly. Traditionally, I like to rate these guys for about five to 600 product gallons, meaning that only RODI water or RO water for these guys. Most RO systems will operate at a three to one wastewater ratio. So 500 product gallons means that you've really been through about 2000 total gallons, 1500 gallon waste and 500 product. So again, it is very important to be diligent with these pre-filters. They are an inexpensive way to make sure your expensive RO membrane will last as long as possible. And when our membrane is doing a good job, our DI lasts. So this is really what I would like for you to take away from this is to change out your pre-filters a little more regularly and all the rest of the system will behave uh, very appropriately. If you have any questions, please contact us at the shop. Number there is 407-599-2123 or you can try our toll free 877-256 three, four, six, seven. Always feel free to shoot us an email sales at aquaee.com. That's a Q U a E E.com. And this has been Pete with aqua effects. I appreciate your time. You guys have a good one. Bye now.